when's the last time you considered that one day you'll die? What are you leaving behind? Did your life have meaning? We often think we have all the time in the world, so we put off our dreams, our aspirations. We pick up a nine to five and say, there's always tomorrow. But that's not really the case, is it? At any time, at any moment, this could all just end. Ikiru means to live. It's a meditation on trying to find purpose in the last days of one's life. It was released in Japan in 1952, and you can feel that. The echoes of war seem to saturate every frame. Walls are scorched by fire. Ailments ravage the population. And there's a clear divide between the Americanized younger generation and older, more traditional social structures. It's like being transported back in time. And that's due in part to the set design. A lot of attention is paid to small details. Details that, just by looking, tell you a lot about a place or the people within them. One of the most notable uses of set design can be seen in the office. Just look at the piles and piles of accounting ledgers and legal documents that suffocate the atmosphere. And those paper monoliths aren't just there to show the weight of bureaucracy, they also isolate and imprison. That theme extends to the tables, the support pillars, even the stairs. With every frame so meticulously crafted, the message is clear. The nail that sticks out gets hammered down. And these themes of confinement extend past the office. Watanabe himself is trapped. His whole life he's put work over everything. Even his own son. So when he's diagnosed with cancer, he's alone. And the camera shows this by enclosing him in small bars, crowded night scenes, and prison-like barriers. All it takes is a little set design and cinematography to show just how out of place Watanabe is. From what I've said so far, you may think this film is pretty bleak. In a lot of ways, it feels similar to Death of a Salesman. Both have problematic father-son relationships, and both men are crushed by systems beyond their control. I put 34 years into this frame, and I can't pay my insurance. You can't eat the arms and throw away the peel. A man isn't a piece of fruit. Death of a Salesman is almost entirely pessimistic, where life insurance makes a man more valuable dead than alive. But the reason Ikiru is my favorite film of all time is because it's not just the misery of life, but the beauty. Our protagonist transforms from a sobbing, soulless mummy to someone who builds a park in the middle of Tokyo. Despite all the red tape, despite all the challenges, that's why I love this film. It's not just a story about the failings of post-war Japan, 
It's about a man learning to live. Balancing the light and dark themes of your story can go a long way to getting the audience on your side, but you won't get anywhere unless your actors are good enough to elicit sympathy. Luckily, Takeshi Shimura gives us a tour de force performance as Kanji Watanabe. Well, let me explain. Ikiru released in 1952, before Marlon Brando gave rise to the theatrics we know today. So the performances are more reminiscent of theater or silent film. And somehow it works. Exaggerated faces and dialogue that would normally feel out of place make up the life-breathing fabric of this film. I feel the pain in his eyes as he sings a song from his youth. I feel the struggle for connection when he throws himself at his son's steps. It's goofy at times, but it just makes it all the more endearing. And our attachment to Watanabe is the reason that scene in the snow is so touching. At the start, the song was a lament of a life unlived. But now, with the park built, it's acquiring affirmation that with what little time we have left, we too can change. Coca-Cola. Give yourself a break. Have a Coke. Akiru was my gateway to cinema. It showed me that films could be so much more than a collection of action set pieces, <laughs> even though I still love them. It allowed me to see that when you take all of its parts, Theater, painting, writing, music, and you combine them just right. You can do more than just thrill and excite. You can say something about the world. You can capture that spark of humanity. It opens so many new doors to explore, and for that, I'll always be grateful to my first cinematic love, Akiru. Now, there's just one last thing I want to talk about. It's rare for a single scene to stick with me. And when they do stick, they're often big and bombastic. Shin Godzilla's destruction as a haunting choir plays the final showdown in the good, the bad, and the ugly. But none of those scenes are as fragile and delicate as the final moments of Akiru. 
were coming to the end of Watanabe's funeral. The bureaucrats shout and cry. <laughs> we fade in to the Office of Public Affairs. A new section chief is in our old friend's chair. A work request comes in. And the response? Pawned off to public works. Nothing has changed. One man rises, remembering the promise made just days ago. His co-workers look on with disapproving glares. The section chief takes off his glasses and, without a single word, the nail out of place is hammered down. He grabs his chair, sits down behind towers of paper and ink, himself barely visible in the frame. He sinks further and is buried. It could have just as easily ended here, a poignant note about systemic change. But the film keeps going. We cut to the same man who, seconds ago, was utterly defeated. He looks down and sees the park built by Watanabe. He sees children laughing, playing, living. In the middle of Tokyo is an oasis of innocence, a small refuge in a desert of post-war destruction. The camera tilts up to that sky Watanabe hadn't seen in decades. In center frame is a man completely changed by a singular act. As individuals, we aren't likely to change the world, but our actions make a difference in the lives of those around us. Whether it's as grand as a park or just being there for a friend. Ikiru lets me believe that living for others might just be a beautiful way to live.